The team in Brussels was the subject of my next filming. So, uh, welcome to the chemistry department of the Université Libre de Bruxelles, University of Brussels. We have to find a way to deposit the nanoclusters, uh, the metal nanoclusters on the uh, carbon nanotubes uh, using atmospheric plasma techniques. Uh, but a non-metal doesn't like to stick with the metal. Uh, if you want them to stick together, you need, you need to create an interface, something which is intermediate. Uh, uh, that's the reason why we need to activate the surface. Otherwise, they, these guys don't, don't want to go together. So, uh, à présent, je réduis la distance entre la torche à What présent. kind of experiments will you be doing? Uh, you ask me what kind of experiments we will do, well, at least at the beginning of the project. Just imagine that this is the, the nanotube, and we have ultimately, those, this is the carbon nanotube, and we have to deposit on this carbon nanotube very small uh, metal particles, which is in the nanometer range. The group of uh, Jean-Jacques Pirot in Namur can do that using uh, vacuum techniques. And it works quite well, I must say. You, you have seen maybe fantastic pictures of, of that. And the idea is to use this plasma to uh, deposit the particles, but uh, in air, atmospheric plasma. So. Just to summarize again, we will start not using substrates as like uh, nanotubes because it's too complicated uh, to manipulate at the beginning. So we'll use uh, HOPG. So HOPG is Alors, a highly oriented chirality graphite. So it is the same element as a nanotube. Uh, it's carbon. Uh, and it has basically the same kind of structure of... Uh, a nanotube, but, but the advantage is that it's flat. Uh, it's completely flat. Uh, I should even say it is atomi atomically flat. Uh, then we will use a, a plasma system. Uh, in this torch, we will generate, uh, I should say, ions, uh, electrons, and neutrals, plus, minus, and N. They will be sent out of the torch. Okay, and the gas that will be used uh, is either argon, helium. The first step will be what we call an activation of the surface. So we hope that we will put on the surface active groups that can be oxygen or nitrogen containing groups. So in that way, the surface will be activated. That does mean that the surface will be ready to make a chemical bond with the particles that will, that will reach the surface. Also, we will create small holes in the, surfa in the surface. Uh, strange, uh, the idea that, we, that one wants to create defects on the surface. Well, if you have a defect, you increase the reactivity of a surface. And we will inject using a small tube that will be here. We will inject a molecule that contains the interesting metal. It could be gold, platinum, or stuff like that. So the precursor will be injected this way, like a small droplet. The droplets will be injected there. They will, as you see, interact with the active species coming from the plasma torch. And they will be pushed, I should say actively pushed, so reactively pushed, to the surface. Uh, and we hope that they will be deposited. So this is the goal that we need to reach. Uh, first on graphite. The interest of having a plasma is that it is a very simple way uh, to give energy to particles, and then to use the energy given to the particles to make uh, chemistry at room temperature and uh, uh, in a clean way, I should say. Is there a possibility that some new science may come out of this? Okay, uh, 
as I just mentioned when I ex was explaining the, the, the plasma, heat is the worst way to uh, activate a chemical reaction. Plasma chemistry is, is uh, a chemistry of the 21st century. So the chemistry of plasma uh, is still at the very beginning, very beginning. The chemistry in the gas phase is very, very complicated to understand, and it's still, a, it's still the, the beginning of this new chemistry. So this is, I think, the new science that we can bring there. The nano uh, part of this project uh, is also uh, a way to bring new science we have uh, f uh, fantastic new properties uh, of metals at the nanometer scale. Uh, just to give you a very brutal example, uh, gold, for instance, gold uh, is known to be a non-reactive metal. This is why uh, it is uh, such a valuable metal. Uh, people like to have gold because uh, gold doesn't corrode. Uh, gold stays forever. Uh, so gold basically has uh, no chemical interest, it doesn't react. Uh, but when, when you decrease the size of gold, when you go to the uh, nano, uh, to the nano uh, size, then suddenly gold starts to have chemical reactivity. And then you create new chemistry again, uh, because you just decrease the size. And that's fantastic. So this is the two parts of new science that we can bring. Tell me about your, yourself. Tell me what kind of person you are. This is a very private question. <laughs> Speaking about myself, uh, well, uh, I'm 41 years old, uh, and I'm, well, I've done quite a, a, few, a few things in my life. After my PhD, I... Uh, I went to the army. Uh, at that time in Belgium, we, we had to go to the army uh, for one year. And then after that, I, fi I found a temporary position uh, at the university. Uh, I like uh, paintings. I like, uh, well, I do some sports. I, I have the, the chance to live very close to the, to the forest, so I do a lot of jogging uh, uh, when, when there is no storm, like, like today. Uh, and uh, while I have uh, many problems indeed, uh, I like nice cars <laughs> also. <laughs> I, I don't think I've, uh, I'm the typical scientist, uh, as people can imagine. I, I, like, uh, I like life. Uh,